So this is part of a series of Hades streams where I'm doing 32 Heat, Boonless, and Mirrorless. Uh, mirrorless kind of self-explanatory. No, Mirror Boonless just means that if I get a boon at any point in the run, I cannot use it and I have to sell it when I can. It's one in a series of six. I did every weapon. Um, this had been done once before by Nana, which inspired me to do this. Uh, she did it once with the rail with Hestia. And so I wanted to use a different rail aspect and also use all five other weapons because I thought it would be really fun and interesting, right? Uh, to be the first person to do it and also just to showcase the different weapons. I just thought this is a really neat challenge. It's a little different than like speedrunning, for instance. Um, the footage here is from a little while back. I recorded these all in February and March, I believe. Uh, and then I was super duper sick, which is uh, unfortunate. I was a bit under the weather. So I don't remember exactly every single thing I did, which will make it fun for me to watch. And also, the guests haven't seen it ever before. So it'll be super fun for everybody to watch. Uh, with that being said, I think we're going to hop into this one. I'm going to start the little uh, death here that proves that we're unseated. And then we can just kind of talk about things, right? Yeah, we're going to hop into this. For anybody who hasn't seen one of these, what you're going to see in the beginning here is as soon as I unpause, Zagreus will be dying. And that's to prove that the run is unseated, which means that I didn't quit out, which keeps your like room layouts and item pools and things like that, like uh, reward pools, I should say. Um, you get rewarded with one pool. Anyway, uh, yeah, so we're proving that we're unseated, which is a, a thing in the high E community. Um, and then I'll hop right into using the Zag Sword. It should be very fun. Dope. So that's Zagreus dying. Unfortunately, on this one, we don't get to see what to. So just imagine it's probably like the greatest, uh, most fantastic battle. And that it was also literally impossible for me to not get hit by whatever hit me because I would have outplayed it if I could. Oh, he walked on spikes. Well, <laughs> we got we got the dialogue there. The unavoidable, entirely unavoidable spikes. If you didn't know, they are the single most dangerous weapon weapon enemy in this entire game. Like uh, the 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 I don't know what the guy's name is in Hollow Knight. The beetle that you play as. He's got a nail, which is sort of like a spike. Oh goodness! It turns out we have Zach on commentary again with the Hollow Knight. Hey, no. My name is Frederick. We established this. I don't know why I keep saying that. It's not even funny. I don't know where the YouTube video is going to start, so they will not have experienced this establishment at all. Well, okay. So, my name's Frederick. It's not, actually. It's not even close to any <laughs> of my names. I mean, I guess my last name starts with F, so it's, it works. This is kind of a little silly, but for anybody who doesn't know or doesn't care about the lore of Guilty Gear, uh, the main character's name is Soul, like the Spanish word for son. Uh, but his actual name before he went by that, like he decided to go by that, was Frederick. And so when you were using that as your alternate name, I was definitely just imagining you as Soul from Guilty Gear. <laughs> um, but keeping it on Hades from H Hades, uh, this is the pack. It is the same pack that I had for all of the runs, I believe, for this. I don't think I made a single tweak. Um, you can see this doing exclamation point pack in the chat live and then if you're watching on youtube it you know there'll be a link in the description um but yeah it's the same one that i've done before the bottom two you can't see on the stream because of the webcam but approval process and tight deadline are both turned off tight deadline being off is kind of a core element of me doing these challenges because i like the fact that they're like a different kind of challenge as opposed to like speed running um so tight deadline for anybody who's not familiar it just turns it into speed running you have a time frame that you have to beat the first area second area third area so so on and so forth um, and I don't like being rushed when I do things, particularly like difficult challenges. I love difficult challenges on this, this channel, especially self-imposed, unnecessary, uh, you know, e exhausting, precise challenges. Uh, but yeah, we, we, we turn tight deadline off and I'm not going to go over every single thing on the screen, but the other core elements here are I would take things that would change the enemies like middle management or extreme measures. Uh, and I would take things that would make them like tankier or make the fights take longer like jury summons adding more little enemies to have to defeat or giving them more life so on and so forth but i generally avoided things that would make the enemies faster because that changes like the whole fight with them that changes like your pattern recognition uh that made me rush or that made the final boss fight more difficult so the final boss fight is as close to regular as possible um, and that's kind of the rundown of the pack Man, do you have any thoughts for the pack or going into the run period before we get into the actual super duper action uh no let's just jump right into it let's get in there let's see some action tough acting action 
we didn't do the product placement that was on my mind because they need to pay you first. Yeah, yeah, they need to pay me. Where, where, are you, where are you guys at? I mean, John Madden, we need somebody else now because he's not alive. Because, not really. because he's not, he, he doesn't, he's not tough acting anymore. That's probably. <laughs> no, no, he's not. He's not. He's not any acting. He's not weak acting either. That, yeah, that's, that was probably inconsiderate of me. That was probably. Yeah. Um, did, did you meet him on your brief trip to the Celestial Plane? Again, I don't think that's going to be on you. So before we started this video, for clarification, uh, we were having a little audio issue. So I, I, I had left existence, i.e. was muted. Um, no, you were a ghost. Were, yeah, I did, I, did a, I did a quick fist bump. I was a, I was a shade in the underworld. with uh, Much like, like Orpheus, I did go to the underworld and escape. And like Her Hercules and like, there, there's a list. I'm, I'm not the first. I'm the greatest, but not the first. And John John Madden was uh, having a good old time fighting in Elysium. Naturally, I mean that's where all celebrated champions go. He's a multiple time champion. <laughs> Madden, John, Madden. <laughs> boom. <laughs> With that being said, uh, on the gameplay here, um, so in the first area you get a boon or you get a hammer. You're gonna get a hammer eventually uh, offered to you, but I didn't get it right away, which is unfortunate. Uh, instead, I got Artemis, which is kind of a bad pool, right? Um, because well, in a way, it's actually not the worst. But with what I have on the screen, normally the first thing that I want to take is cast. And I say this for every one of these in the series, but it's like cast is the least useful in a boonless run because you can't get a god's cast. You just get Zagreus's default cast. And because it's also mirrorless, I only get the one that gets lodged into enemies. So you can actually make use of it. Like it, it is functional in ways because it can defeat a lot of enemies in Tartarus, just one shot, so on and so forth. But if you have to get rid of something, that's going to be the first choice. Um, right. Although with the sword, it is my only projectile. So... That's also relevant. Um, but this is a bad pool because we don't get cast. Um, so we had to get rid of special or attack because it's kind of hard to not use dash strike. Yeah. I did want to say, though, Artemis specifically is probably the dash strike that's the easiest to not use because you can literally dash around. You just can't dash attack. Mm. Whereas if you had like Ares or Dionysus, if you dash, they put out an attack trailing you. Yeah, um, no so, yeah. But yeah, I didn't end up taking the dash strike. Uh, but however, after I took the one that I took, there we go, special. Um, that means that I have to do all of Tartarus now from beginning to end using just the sword attack. Well, I guess also the, the cast. Yeah, you can do that though. But, um, insurmountable. I mean, clearly we're watching the video, so I assume that you surmounted it. But uh, but what I wanted to say was after I get the bad pull in the first one, then I get one of the best things that you can get, which is uh, increased heart, a mini boss heart. Ooh, um, no now it is in uh, Erebus which is a challenge down there, which means I can't get hit while I fight for this heart. If I go to that room, I have to beat the entire room without getting hit to get the reward. And if I don't, I just get an onion, which heals you like one or two HP. Um, so it is a risk, but during this run specifically, compared to the other thing on the screen, it's not a risk because a boon is just objectively bad for me. Um, I guess not literally objectively bad because you sell them for money, but you know, you, you get where I'm coming from. Yeah. So we get to start this. We get to start this off with a little fun. Fifty health, no special attack, and I got to do a an Erebus room. You, well, I guess we'll see. I shouldn't ask. <laughs> You're gonna fail in the middle of it. So this is actually kind of fun, right? Because like obviously with the given video, you know that I beat the challenge that's in the title of the video, but you don't know if I beat this Erebus room. Uh, I, I think I forgot. I think I forgot to mention that in the opening. But the guest you're being has never seen this. This is his first time seeing this uh, recording. Yes. So this is all new to him. Also, your fate is in your own hand at the moment. What was that? Your fate is in your own hand at the moment. Yeah, I think so. This makes a lot been, of sense. If fate hasn't been written. That would have been better. At least, uh, this makes a lot of sense with me describing the pact earlier. But like, I like the Erebus rooms because they're not a rush. They're a don't get hit, which is more in line right. with the things that I like. Um, yeah. One thing that's interesting about the Erebus rooms is there's never any traps, but there are harder enemies than there should be for the level. Like, I was in Tartarus, and I got the Flame Wheels, which are an Elysium enemy. Um, but in general, that room worked out well for me, especially because the armored enemy that had benefits package was the... Um, I reference him all the time, and now I can't think of his name. The Lout. Uh, but the two that he had was the trail line between him and other enemies, which is... You know, it was fine. I was able to avoid it. And you also have one that make him do more damage. But if I'm trying not to get hit whatsoever anyway... Yeah, that's not going to matter. Versus this room, which as we can see, went horribly straight from the start. 
Uh, part of the reason being, I've talked about this a lot on these this series, but the hardest benefits package for me, and it ties in with the pack that I mentioned earlier, is the one that makes the enemies go faster because it changes your muscle memory and your pattern recognition. Um, mm -hmm. And so all the little skeletons in that room both had armor and went faster than they traditionally should. You don't have a knob just inside of you? You just turn the feet up? Like, just match their, te <laughs> their tempo? No, I don't have any knobs inside of me. Uh, oh. um, <laughs> just ignore that I said that. I'm definitely not. I'm a human. I'm a human man. Named Frederick? <laughs> that was not computer. Well, don't ignore that. Uh, <laughs> don't. don't. <laughs> I will say that this is an interesting room so far because I got the... Uh, little glass shard guys there that I just defeated. I don't know what they're called. Um, but they, along with the skulls, are like some of the lowest HP enemies that you can get. Uh, the witches have low HP too. I guess that little guy on the ground, at the, a lot of enemies in Tartarus are kind of weak. But that last room went went pretty well. Nobody had any benefits package that made them get extra armor or anything. Um, so that was a good pool. This commentary took a turn. <laughs> I thought it took a... It's doing okay now, I think. Is I it, think though? Because we've, we've had... Did it take a turn? Because we've had Whitefire on before, who is a, a, a Spectre. Uh, what's wrong with having a, a bit of a robot, right? We're, we're about diversity on this channel. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so this uh, ties into what I was saying earlier. This is Benefits Package, which is giving them this, but it kind of just ties in again. And I, I've said this a couple times now, but it ties in with like, my pack decisions in that they just had a lot of extra health, which isn't a big deal. If you're able to fight them and you can beat the enemy, my mindset is like, you just have to beat them for longer, which is fine. You're still doing the same thing. Right. The pause there is that uh, the darkness will give me five HP, which is valuable, but mm -hmm. the shop is a shop. Uh, unfortunately, to get a centaur heart, which is the most valuable thing you can get from a shop, you need 225, and I have 206 obols at the moment. So... I couldn't afford a centaur heart. I could get healing there, so I could heal the 40 damage that I have. Um, uh, but the long play, I think, is the max health. Even if 5 doesn't sound like a lot, I can get through yeah, Tartarus I, with 70 HP. So. Yeah. I mean, it, you'll have plenty of opportunities to go to the shop later, too. So. I mean, or you could just never heal with the shop. Like, I could just, like I guess I get through Tartarus with my HP and just get healed by the fountain at the end, you know? Yeah, that too. Best case scenario, you could choose the darkness yeah. and get a fountain room. <laughs> Uh, so I think I forgot to say this in the intro as well, but um, I I played these recordings are from months ago. They're from like February, March. That's not going to be relevant to somebody watching this on YouTube, but we're recording this on uh, May 15th. Uh, so they're a little old, and that's because I was very under the weather for a while. So And also this is the finale. You have to schedule with everybody. Um, so I don't remember my exact actions in the moment. Obviously, I remember my own gameplay style, and I remember anything that's you know, super significant. Uh... But yeah, I didn't know that that was going to be a fountain there by heart. Bean, are you super familiar with the uh, the wretched sneak that I'm fighting there? The mini boss here? Wretched Oh, no. I thought it was a witch. No, I don't think I've seen that guy before. Oh, no, I have. Never mind. I think yeah, in I my experience, the wretched sneak was the last one that showed up for me. Um, as far as mini bosses in Tartarus. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we were talking about this in a previous stream. I feel like I got him multiple times during the series. I kind of don't mind him. He does a lot of teleporting, but his attacks are mostly easy to avoid. Even with a yeah. melee weapon like the sword versus the bomb flingers from Asphodel that you can get as a mini boss here who could have projectiles that I could accidentally get hit by. And with middle management, there'd be four of them. Or, uh, what's the other one? The, the big laser guy who, again, you can accidentally step in a laser. So this is just the easiest one to take no damage if you're just on your toes, you know? Yeah. Most important part of the game here, naturally, is to uh, to catch you a fish, right? Got a fish. So we do we do have a uh, validated run. <laughs> so this is an example here of an enemy. Earlier I was talking about the ones that are all low health in Tartarus. And th this enemy is low health relative to like Elysium enemy, sure. But this is like a, a tankier enemy in Tartarus. Being yeah. the wretched thugs, I believe they're called. Um... And I don't think their patterns are necessarily difficult, but them having a lot of health, you just can't eliminate them off the screen very quick. And so then you're at risk yeah. of getting hit by a stray anything else. Yeah. And this is something that's been, again, relevant to uh, almost every entry in this series is 
uh, this is a unique benefits package to the witch, which is that they can shoot homing uh, projectiles now. Oh. And I, I shouldn't even say can shoot. They exclusively shoot homing projectiles now. Um, and that gets me hit a lot. Again, because it's what I said earlier with the speed change. It just changes the, the pattern recognition with them, you know? You're used to care, uh, confidently being able to slide out of the way, and now you can't. Right. And so we talk about this all the time on these runs. Uh, the hammer pools are basically my entire build. You can get two hammers, not counting using the anvil at the end of this, at the end of a, a run in this game. And the hammers change and improve your weapon in different ways. Uh, and they basically make my build, other than the max health that I get or the temporary things I get from Charon's uh, wells. So this is the first hammer we get. Uh, in my experience, you do always get... I was going to say I always get one offered in Tartarus, but I don't think that's correct. In Tartarus or Asphodel. Your first one will come in one of the first two worlds, I believe. Um, but you almost always get it, get offered it, at least in Tartarus. Um, so yeah, this is going to be like basically half of my build. And the three that are offered here on the screen are all three actually useful. Um, you're going to have preferences when you're doing crazy challenges like this, for sure. Uh, but all three of those are beneficial. Like your special hitting twice is nice. Or uh, that actually doesn't hit twice. That's the one that makes it hit wider and more damage. But it's still just extra range and extra damage are just objectively good passively good objectively good um i guess not passively because you can actively take advantage of the extra range uh the bottom one the damage to armor we've talked about this a lot on these streams as well but i feel like at least in my experience personally and i, I say this every time too i wasn't super ingrained with the hades community when i was like learning this game because i vary against spoilers not to say the hades community would spoil things but like i'm just trying to protect myself um, right. Plus, I feel like you like learning things on your own rather than taking a, a predetermined path by the community. Yeah, absolutely. I I like struggling as opposed to asking for advice. I'm that guy. Um. So with that being said, when I was like first kind of learning this game, I was like damage to armor, not the biggest deal because when I play roguelikes, not exclusively Hades, but just any roguelikes, I or even just games in general, I want to build my build for bosses. I say games in general because even if I was playing like uh, just a regular game, there's a hard boss coming up. It's like what level up am I going to get that would be useful for them, right? Um, yeah. And so when I was playing this game coming up, I was like that bottom one to me wouldn't look appealing because bosses don't have armor. So that's just not useful in the boss fights. But that's actually not true. Uh, so the Tartarus bosses don't have armor whatsoever. But that's fine because you, if you want to do hard challenges in this game, you should be comfortable defeating the Tartarus area, right? Uh, learning the Asphodel boss does have armor because his mini heads that he summons all have armor. Um, mm. And then the final boss of the game summons adds, which is arguably the hardest part of the fight, in my opinion. Uh, and those adds, not only do they have armor, they are more armor than they are health. Um, so they're basically all armor, in theory. Right. Uh, so it's useful for two out of four boss fights. Um, and 300% to attack is very useful because there's other weapons where I feel like it only... I think like the fist, for example, it's like breaching cross, and it's only for your dash punch, not your reg, like not all your attacks, just dash punch. And this one's for any attack button, which is fantastic. Um, so that's me on this stream taking the time to ramble about supernova and breaching slash, just to tell you that I take the one in the middle. Uh, <laughs> you took it on the on our last one too. Uh, so I didn't take that one because I wasn't using the sword. But uh, what BN's referencing is I did take a healing one on the gloves. Yeah. Um, Same thing, right? It was like, or maybe it was special. You got two back home. So it was similar, but it was not the same thing. So with the gloves, uh, you don't have the second half of the sentence on curse slash, which is just very negative. I lose sixty percent of all health. Um, oh. So there's no negative to the gloves one. Also, the gloves one heals a percent uh, of your max health. It heals like two percent of your max health. So as your max health goes up, it'll heal more and more percent. And also. Okay. <laughs> Well, no, because this is where it changes. Also, the glove one only takes effect on kill. You have to kill with your special to get healed. Oh, okay. This one is every single attack that I land will heal me a flat two health. So it doesn't scale up with percent, and I do lose 60% of my max health, but every single hit that I do heals me. Which in a run like this, where you know I don't get death defiances, you can only build up so much health, there's only so much healing, it'd be pretty useful. So this decision here was between... Uh, the gems on the right also give you money once you get late enough in the game, and the keys on the left also give you a reroll. Um, 
So the keys are more appealing because the reroll is more appealing so that I can avoid taking a bad uh, boon. But they have a skull. So I was just like, you know, is, is the risk worth it for the harder fight? Uh, that one's not going to be a mini boss because a mini boss would be a boon uh, skull. So that one's just going to be an extra tough room. It'll probably just have like more armored enemies or more enemies in general. Uh, so I was just debating the difficulty of it. And I was like, yeah, it's worth it. I'm good at this game, right? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. I don't know. You're on official leader, boys. I tell you good. So uh, <laughs> I talked about it at the beginning with the with the pact and the playstyle, and a lot of my regulars in chat. Uh, I don't want to say like to pick on me, but I'm gonna outright say they like to pick on me because I play uh, safe mitigation strategy usually, and I probably still will with this. But immediately when this room started, I knew that I could heal and I just walked in the face of one of those lasers and just beat them up because whatever damage they do to me, I'm just going to heal back like that. Right. So if you wanted to see a little more in somebody's face play style, here we are, right? I got offered a... Uh, I'm sorry? I said A. Yeah. I got offered a, a similar choice here except where it's like difficult room versus easy room with different rewards. Except health is just better than money, so that was a... Yeah. Easy choice. Yep. So, Ian, I'm curious what you think. So, this is the second one now uh, with us on stream together. You did the fresh file run with me as well. What are your general thoughts on the sword as, as a weapon in this game? Um, I think it's more fun to watch. Interesting. Um, I don't know. Just the, the overhand attack is cool. No, that's fair, because um, I think last stream I said that when I was playing through this casually, before I was doing like crazy difficulty challenges or whatever, uh, I thought that the rail was probably my least favorite, although I did grow to love Lucifer rail, which I talked about on last stream. Um, but if it's not rail, my least favorite probably would be the sword. Um, I just feel like it's very limited in what it can do. Like Usually you think a starter weapon, because it is the first weapon that you get in the game, would be like Ryu from Street Fighter, where it's going to be, or Mario in Mario games, because they're very similar, Mario and Ryu. Uh, <laughs> you would... They're both white men, yes. Well, I, <laughs> Ryu's probably not white, actually. Um, Whatever. They both have light skin. That's the closest we got. Um, no, but they're both usually like the well-rounded, balanced character in their game. And so, like, naturally, that's kind of how I imagine the sword would be. But it's not really. It's very specified right it's very it has it's melee it's all melee right the mm -hmm. gloves are are comparable but i don't think it's the well-rounded one of the bunch if i were going to choose um but yeah no I, I i do think it's interesting that you say it's the most fun to watch and i think especially now with me doing a little bit of a gameplay shift with the the healing one here yeah. which is different than the healing one that you saw me with before um, because although that did heal me, I still had to play passively because it only healed me, like I said, on kills. So there's a set amount of health you're going to get back in a given room, only per however many enemies there are. Yeah. Uh, I'm just hoping your damage output is a lot better than the gloves because the gloves, you just <laughs> just sat in a room for so long. I imagine it's going to be similar because it's boonless, so you're just probably unavoidable to have to deal with that. Well, I, I will you clarify. Uh, BM was with me for the, the gloves uh, run in this series, which was the longest one, but it was also five sack, which is relevant. That's right. Um, but I do think part of what you were referencing with sitting in a room for a long time is that the gloves are just melee, like the sword is. And there was times where I just had, I couldn't face an enemy straight up. So I had to run away and like hit and run them. Because right. um, I don't actually think the, the damage on the gloves is particularly bad. Uh, it's just that it's not, I can't think of a good word for what I'm trying to, it's, it's not multifaceted. So when you're in a situation where an enemy is good at taking you on face up, especially like an armored heavy vermin, uh, you know, limited in what you can do. Uh, I paused here specifically so that everybody can laugh on, uh, laugh on me, laugh on me. Please first get get on me and then laugh. Um, so what what I do here, you'll see there's a beautiful thing on the ground. It's the it's the spikes. Now that's the greatest threat in this whole game. That's why they defeated me to to make this run unseated. Uh, and in front of that is a trove, and I decide to take the trove because I'm in Tartarus and it's worth 150 bucks. Uh, and as soon as you do the spikes reactivate exactly and for anybody who doesn't know you don't have to take the trove from that side the game didn't screw me i could walk around to the other side and activate the trove yeah. i'm just i'm just a silly guy at least you get your health back right away <laughs> yeah no that's it, that's a very good point <laughs> 
it's kind of so this is actually a big difference between the gloves and the sword and i did think it was funny so i didn't schedule these specifically to have bnb &B with me for both of the runs where i get a daedalus hammer that can make me able to heal myself that wasn't like that's coincidental um but i do think that this is interesting where with the gloves going up against an enemy that's tanky would be the worst case scenario because you have to fight them for a long time just to get that one percentage when you kill them but with the sword it means you get to hit them a whole bunch and just heal yourself and also again a big difference would be with the bosses because with the bosses you don't get to take much advantage yeah. of healing on kill yeah so, oh he didn't show up last time so i've got a, a bunch of fortunate things we had the the heart in the beginning the very beginning the um 50 that i got for going to erebus and now we have a fight with thanatos who gives you a heart as the reward and it's the same reward regardless and it's the same criteria to beat him which is to kill more people than him but getting him in tartarus where the enemies are weaker and especially when i'm doing boomless where my build's not going to get much better was a fantastic draw and he gave out these little glass laser guys which again best case scenario they have such low health i do think it's interesting though that i talk about like not liking time trials or being rushed and that is exactly what this is yeah. No, it's fun because being quick is, is fun. Being quick is fun to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but also Sonic proved that a long time ago. Um, you have no idea the amount of restraint I have right now to stop bringing And you have no idea how genuinely proud of you I am <laughs> to have that restraint. Um. Thankfully, it, uh, and this is affected by jury summons, which is one of the pack things that I put on. Thankfully, they did put out 1,360 uh, glass laser enemies in this room, which was fantastic. You can tell because I killed, uh, what does it say there, 3,500 of them. Um, no, but I just say that to joke that they also put the witches out there. And the witches would normally be a great pool, but they have the benefits packages that made them have a lot of armor and a lot of life. Uh, so they weren't a good pool in this situation, but again, thankfully there were so many of the glass guys that it didn't matter. I do think it's actually fun. If you look at the screen there, you'll see that it was 35 to 12 was the score, but depending on the enemies that get summoned, cause the enemies are still just random room summons. Uh, you could beat Thanatos or lose to Thanatos either way. And the score would just be like 13 to eight, mm. but instead mine was 35 to 12. That's just kind of a fun thing. You know what we should stream? Uh, family feud. <laughs> yeah? Is that, do you, who do you think would be the best Hades characters on that? If, if Hades was going as a family? Wait, hold... Wait. wait. Who's, so, who's the most you, knowledgeable? Wait, who has the best are trivia? You saying, are, wait, no, no, hold on. Hold on, let me ask my question before you clarify further, because my question is funny. Uh, are you asking whether or not like, Hades characters would do well in family feud or whether lucky mccoy would do very well in tartarus oh i do love that nobody's gonna get that reference um <laughs> i was definitely asking the first one uh so i think probably persephone uh eurydice um uh, orpheus yeah and uh megara that would be the team. Not Megara. Not, 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 not Um, 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 well, Medusa. That's the team. Interesting. Yeah, I think your first three picks made a lot of sense from the standpoint of they... Oh, no, not Medusa. Achilles. Achilles. Jeez. Okay, so all of your picks make a lot of sense on basis that they were on Earth, which I, I think was probably part of your strategy. No, I was just going by smart, but yeah. That works, too. Uh, but yeah, they weren't in the under... Because like, you could say Hades has been around for a long, long time, but he's basically been in the underworld the whole time. He wouldn't know trivia. He wouldn't know anything. Although, he reads a lot of paperwork. With that being said, let's hop back into uh, <laughs> the period here. Yes, yeah, so that last one, we were kind of talking over it being silly, but it was just a lot of taking advantage of the sword. Thankfully, what worked out fantastic is the first boon that I had to take from Artemis was getting rid of my special. And then the thing that I... I it didn't make a choice in my data Hammer because, again, you can't let Tartarus decide what you're going to do long-term for a run. Same way that I decided to take that uh, Darkness for health earlier. Um... But yeah, it worked out great that I like I only had my attack left and I was like able to get Curse Slash, which is exclusive for attack. My specials don't heal me. It's not any attack you do. It is the attack button, you know? Right. So that worked out pretty well. Uh, this, however, was a bit unfortunate. Electo, in my opinion, is just the hardest. Like, it's not even kind of close. She's the worst sister to draw. 
Well, I mean, yeah, I would think so. All three of them. Well, all three is because of the um, benefits package. Like, even if it was Meg, there could be all three of them. Um, oh, okay. But it was like certain ones are um, have different amounts. I guess that's that. Um, yeah, no, the way benefits package, and this, that's actually a good thing to bring up, even for just anybody who's curious. Uh, so, I, you know, I could be wrong in this, but I'm, I'm fairly confident that with benefits package, you can get Electo with both other sisters as you see now, but you can also get Electo with just Meg, uh, or Electo with just Siphony. And those last two aren't better than getting all three. It just means that in this one, Electo has herself and, like, one attack or two attacks from Meg, and the other one, uh, and also one or two attacks from Tiziphany, whereas before she would have, like, more frequent attacks from Meg. Or more frequent attacks from the zip, you know? Yeah. But regardless, I don't really think about the accessory sisters too much when I'm thinking about which one's the worst to pull. But I mean they're probably relevant. Like this attack from Meg's not fantastic. Like it's, it's can be hard to deal with in a run like this. Um but in general, Electo is is the hardest to pull for me. I have a I have a question for you. Sure, what's up? Uh could you imagine Hades playing Family Feud? Could I yeah, I, I can picture him saying good answer and clapping. For sure. <laughs> And then when he gets but, he gets one wrong, he'll say blood and darkness. Um, here's something you soak overnight. The skulls of the lost souls of the damned. Yeah, 100 people on Earth definitely said that. <laughs> All right, uh, what? <laughs> with, with this fight here, uh, so with me, the, the ability for me to heal myself, it kind of like takes away the tension a little bit, right? Um, but it also kind of doesn't because I have low health. Like right now, it took away 60% of my health. So I would have more than double what I have now. I'd have over 150 if I didn't take her slash, which is a lot of health for the Tartarus fight. That's not the Tartarus boss is not particularly difficult, even with Electo being the worst one. But here, if you just get stuck in a tough situation, I take a couple damage in quick succession, um, and I'm at 36, which is half my health. And if you think about the fact, obviously we're we're early in the game, but if you think about the fact that like you know Hades or Theseus can do that damage in literally one strike, I think the Minotaur probably can too. Um, you know, it's just. You can get your health back. The big worry is taking, making multiple mistakes in quick succession. That's like, well, before it was, um, like 21 hits you would have needed to. It doesn't matter anyway. I would also clarify, um, your audio is getting a little, little robotic there. Uh, oh, really? Is this better? Yeah, I can hear you now. Go ahead and just repeat. Uh, that, like, blood fog I've never seen before. Oh, yeah. Um. Yeah, one thing that I want to clarify was the... Da I said that all your attacks give you health. The dash attack does not. Um, so if I dash over and do two swipes, which is a common thing that I'll do, I don't get six health for that. I only get four. Um, which also factors into why I did this specifically here. So, again, anybody who's played Hades, you'd know that there's... There's a unique dash attack for each weapon. When you dash and press the attack button, they do an attack different than just dashing up and doing the standard attack. And here, I specifically don't do the dash attack. I dash and then do the regular sword swipe once, and then dash and do the regular sword swipe. So I heal myself while I'm dashing around here. Like, dash. See? So I got six health just dashing around hitting her instead of doing a dash attack. Yeah. And that's going to be relevant when I'm in tense situations and I'm trying to heal myself. The max health reduction thing, uh, it did say this on the prompt, but it's also just kind of relevant in general. Um, as you can see on the screen, it says plus two to my health, which would normally be plus five for darkness. It is everything that I pick up going forward. It's not just at the time that I chose curse slash. Right. So those will give me two health. The centaur hearts will give me 12 health as opposed to 25. I think Curse Slash is fun and interesting, just in general, right? Because it changes things so so substantially. Like I, I hesitated before saying substantially, but I, I think that's fair to say. It just changes things a lot in the way that you're utilizing the weapon. Almost like a hidden aspect would. Mm -hmm. And of course, naturally, that's a fantastic first pull there, getting the, the center heart. So in this run, I, I mentioned earlier, but like Daedalus Hammers and max health increases are like the only thing that matters as far as like a build. Um, right. Like you want to avoid boons, getting things from Carolyn's well can be useful. There are other factors, but in general, those are the two main focuses. Um, but with Curse Slash, it's like the center hearts are worth even more, you know, it feels like. Mm -hmm.
there we can see that I got my special attack back, which feels fantastic. And that might give you the flashbacks back to uh, the fresh file, where it's attack, attack, special, attack, attack, special. Oh, yeah. Even with um, the attack healing me and the special not, it still felt better to do attack, attack, special. Because otherwise you're just doing attack, attack, dash, and attack, attack again, right? You can't... Because the, there's a third hit in the attack series for anybody who doesn't know. Uh, but it is specifically designed to be slow. Uh, it's like he attacks qu quick twice and then charges one up to thrust them very far away. Which is just not productive because it thrusts them very far away and it's very slow. Uh, well, I'm very glad that they got to be reunited. I never saw that in my game. Yeah. It's very cute. Zagreus is out here doing the good deeds of the underworld. He got their he got their pact worked on. Their their underworld pact. What what did he do? Like convince Hades to be like, hey man, uh, you're kind of whack, making them not be together. I would I would say what he does is play the game and find out. It's fantastic. There's, really, there's some great storylines in this game. <laughs> See, that would require time <laughs> devoted to playing it. The um. The the little guys that you see pop out of the ground there, the little, um, I forget what they said, like, dra Drakons or something. I don't even know how to pronounce it. But, uh, it's like D-R-A-C-O-N-S, I believe. Uh, but the little, they almost look like little learning heads. Uh, they're an interesting enemy, too, because they pop out immediately, as opposed to every other enemy summons with a little circle on the ground. Um, mm. and that can be very problematic. Thankfully, they didn't have armor there, so it worked out well. This is a situation, especially if you didn't have Curse Slash, uh where the sword or the gloves can be less than ideal on a, a run attempt like this. And I don't think, I ended up taking Curse Slash for this, but I don't think Curse Slash is the only way to do it. It's not like if you were interested in doing this challenge, I would be like, yeah, copy my, you know, Daedalus Hammer build. Yeah. Um, although I will say that I do like to use this series to show off what weapons can do as far as like how to utilize the weapon and just get better. If you were like, hey, I want to get better at using the spear, you can just watch the spear video and kind of just learn how I utilize it in a difficult situation because I don't have boons and I'm just taking advantage of the spear. Uh, that is kind of flipped on its head a little bit with this one with the sword, because if you don't have Curse Slash, you probably can't, maybe, definitely shouldn't do some of the things I'm doing. But yeah, if you didn't have Curse Slash, it kind of could change this fight a little bit. Um, yeah. But uh, it's more interesting this way. You can see the... Although, to be fair, you could you know, you know could watch the fresh file, although it would have boons, but, you know, similar, similar weapon. Um, but you can see the confidence with which I just dashed directly at the witches. I was just like, hey, what's yeah. up? Probably makes things go by quicker too. Almost certainly, I would imagine. Although, I don't think we've seen it yet. Uh, I did point out when I was fighting Electo, I got on low health for a moment, right? Um, but it, I say low health, but it was like half health. Um, but it can become a factor that can make things take longer, similar to what you were talking about with the gloves and running away. Is if I get on low health, I'm not just going to like try and play sharp and get damage in to get the fight over quicker. I'm going to try and slowly heal myself. Right? Yeah. So it's another way that it changes the weapon. Because we saw on one of the earlier ones in the series, I, I can't remember what weapon it is offhand. It could have been the bow. It could have been the, the spear. But I got to a point where I was just like... Actually, I think it was the Zeus shield, uh, which was the first one I cleared it with. I was low on health against Hades. And you might think, like, we'll be safe because this is the end of your run. But instead, I was just like, hurry up and end the fight so there's less time to make mistakes. <laughs> yeah. A little bit of statics coming in. Is everything good on your audio, NBN? Oh, really? Is it still coming through? I wonder if my AT turned on and it's coming through the game. Yeah. Could be. It kind of sounds no. like that. Shouldn't be. Um, huh. It's still coming through? Yes. It just went down. It, got, it was less quiet, but... Um, so that actually there was an example of what I was talking about a moment ago. You can see me uh, push the skeleton back into the lava using the thrust. That was a situation where it was useful for me, not only because he got pushed into the lava, which is going to damage him, um, but also, again, it's just the, the third hit of the attack. He did immediately jump out of it, so not the best case scenario. Uh, it went away for the record game, but just something to keep, uh, yeah, keep in mind. I, just watched it go away. I think that might have been a Discord thing, but I didn't do anything. I just went into Discord and watched the green go away. So. Fair enough. Weird. Okay, could be good now though. Um, but yeah, that's just something to keep in mind when you're using the sword. Is like I was saying that I wasn't trying to use the third hit of the attack, the thrust, very often. 
Um, but that's because usually you're going for best DPS or hit stun loop if you have an enemy trap. The thrust does have its uses. You can knock enemies away and you can specifically knock them into traps or, or lava in this case. Mm -hmm. Also, I feel like I haven't had any shops to go to. Uh, or when I did, I didn't have oh. anything that I wanted to spend on. So I have a lot of money. What were you going to okay. say? I just said, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was trying to be Kool-Aid, but I think it came out more Macho Man Randy Savage. But that's okay. We, we appreciate that just as much. Um, <laughs> as you can see here, uh, I got a fountain room when I was at full health because Curse Slash heals me. Um, but you still love to see a fountain room in a run like this because there's no oh, threat, dude. no risk. I definitely do. Also, it's a really cool shield, uh, shield, shade of like blue. You know, it's like a teal. You do love to see that. And there again was Caron just deciding that he was just like, hey, you should probably just keep all your money. I'm not going to offer you anything useful. Bloody wonderful to see you once again. Although, fun fact, I can go ahead and spoil it. It doesn't become relevant in this run. Um, and I did mention this in a previous run on the series in conversation. But there is a Daedalus Hammer that makes, uh, makes your sword do more damage relevant to how much money you currently have. Oh, that's really interesting. And that's, you know, that's percent based. So if you have yeah. like in the thousands, which I already have 810 in Asphodel. If they would have gave me that one, that you know could have been one to consider because it can get pretty chunky. Would you then just not buy anything then? Yeah, I mean that would be the that would be the idea. I mean, me personally, if I was doing a run like this, I'd probably still buy a centaur heart because it's just worth it, you know. Mm -hmm. Especially with me already having curse slash, it'd be different if like the money one was the first thing I got. Um, but yeah, no, just. Something interesting. Honestly. Is that like increases the amount of cash you can get too? Say that again. Isn't there a trinket that you can get that increases the amount of money you get? Uh, there's one that just gives you money, a keepsake. Um, uh, it gives you like 150 from Hypnos. Hypnos is coin sack. Uh, which is actually a good thing to point out because I didn't mention during this run so far, but I am using the, uh, what the heck is it called? Shattered Shackle, which does, makes your cast special and attack do double damage if they don't have a boon and since i'm doing the run boon list that's going to be every attack that i do um so there are other things that you could use in a run like this like obviously just for example uh skelly's lucky tooth would give you a death defiance whereas otherwise i wouldn't have a death defiance and that's nice that is you know it's, it's still objectively beneficial um but the shatter shackle is literally doubling everything that i do so just to point out for anybody who's interested, they're like, boonless, that sounds crazy. And the thing is, it is. You should think that I'm very impressive. I'm, I'm proud of what I've done. But also, my damage output isn't as low as you might think if you just literally didn't have a boon. There's a good example there of something I could confidently dash back for. So this attack that the main learning head is doing right now, where he just like dive bombs the, the ground and does a AoE attack, that one tends to hit me the most out of his attacks, probably, um, because I just underrate the AoE of it. Uh, and then those two little skulls on the ground that are going to summon enemies, you can see they say three over top of them. Uh, I thought I was going to defeat them with the amount of hits I did, and that's why I dashed away to attack this thing instead of just continuing to, uh, to attack them. And I realized it didn't. But being that I knew I had Curse Slash and there was like plenty of you know little Lernies to hit, I was just like, yeah, I could just confidently dash back and hit them. Like Even if I get hit by Lernie, it's not a big deal, which is different than you know normally I would just, oh, that's unfortunate, they're going to summon, you know. Although, to be fair, again, if you're not using the gloves, normally you would also just have a projectile, so. Learning moving around just makes learning look so tiny and not intimidating anymore at all. <laughs> yeah. Now that he doesn't have a body. You know, when you're looking at him aesthetically, maybe, but him moving around is very intimidating to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. So there was the opposite example of me taking a curse slash, uh, slash approach where I was like, hey, I want to prove that I can dodge this attack when he does the triple wave because I tend to get hit by that a lot trying to dodge an attack through it. And that was also just an example of the damage output the way I would traditionally use the sword. I think at one point I had a, a little combo going on for like 600 or 700 when he was just standing still. So, you know, the sword, like I said, potentially my least favorite weapon in general, but, uh, it, you know, it's not... It has its uses. It can pile up its damage as well. It's not like it's just completely obsolete or, you know, not functional. Ugh. 
And here we go to Elysium. Yeah, this is where we're gonna find John Madden. We're only like 16 minutes in and you're already in Elysium? I feel like that's way quicker than the last one. I could be wrong though. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're probably right though. It just goes into what we were saying earlier. Yeah. You wanna die again? Again? Uh, for anybody who's not super familiar with this game or with, you know, just small, fun, I don't know. Uh, you can see there that I had that guy cornered, which typically would be in a situation where they're l literally cornered. Um, I don't know how the game decided that he, I'll, I'll skip back so we can see exactly what I'm talking about. I don't know how the game decided that this guy was cornered. Like he was in, in front of a corner, you know, usually yeah. you're in a corner. It's a little different. Um, but I just wanted to point out that there's wall slams in this game when you knock back somebody into a wall. Uh, but there's also the cornered wall slam, which does more damage. So, just something that maybe a lot of people aren't familiar with when you're just going crazy and fighting. Weird. Especially useful Logic for. What was that? Logically, that one didn't make any sense. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. And the reason he was taking corner damage, just for clarification, is because I was doing the sword special, which has knockback, whereas this regular attack doesn't. Um. As I, you can see here, I talk a lot about being able to hit stun loop enemies during the series. Um, and you can do it with Zagreus's attack attack special here, which I do a lot. Um, but some enemies can get out of that faster than other enemies. They have like better reaction frames or whatever. Uh, and so this guy, I wasn't confident that I could hit stun and loop him from right inside of his face as I was there. And he wouldn't just scoot forward one inch and hit me. Uh, so that's why I dashed behind him. Mm. Again, even with Curse Slash, the ability to heal me, there, there was just no reason not to play that smart, you know? The um, Great Shield there, uh, Great Shield enemies there, they're one of the, I think, least preferred enemies in general. Um, Literally the worst. I like my most hated enemy in the game. Even, like, including Hades. I will he would include them presumably sometime. Yeah, he can. Um, I will say though that uh, you know learning to dash through them as opposed to around their attacks or away from them is important. And also once you get behind them, they're just as hits on loopable as anybody else. Yeah. Um, also, I just think it's an example of Hades doing a good job teaching you about its big challenges because that's Theseus except without a spear. You yeah. Know? Well, isn't Theseus like sort of like all three of them? Um. No, I don't think so. Uh, I think they have, he has a spear, and he's also got the ranged attack with the spear, and he's also got a spear. Yeah, the the reason that I would say no is because he doesn't actually fight like they do. Like aesthetically, yeah, he has a spear. Um, he doesn't have anything in common with the sword guy. Uh, you think about the sword guy? Yeah. yeah okay. He does the shield guy's attack, even though he does it with a spear. He does the shield guy's attack where he dashes forward and does a big circle, kind of similar to Hades. Um, the shield guy has that when he has armor. Um, Oh, okay. None of the other ones do. He has the shield similar to the shield guy. He has a spear, but it functions more like the archers because he exclusively uses it as a projectile. All right. Well, I guess other than the spin attack that I just referenced. But yeah, he uses it as a projectile. Um, and that's actually unique compared to any enemy, uh, Theseus, because he draws it back the same way that Zagreus can. So none of the Elysium enemies do that. Although I will say the other enemies are still training you for things. Like, for instance, the... The sword swipes there are similar to, uh, like, the Minotaur, just smaller. Oh, yeah, they still are. It's just that Theseus doesn't get all the credit. He's not everybody combined. Which makes sense with him just having two attacks, you know? Yeah. Isn't it so sad to look at look at a screen where you get two epics and a rare, and it's like, well... They don't do anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> grab the cast and then never cast. Great. Beautiful. 81 damage? Man, that does sound nice, huh? That's cool. Although, really, it doesn't sound nice when you have the Shattered Shackle, because mine still does more damage than that. Because oh. mine would do a Mine does 50 by default, but the Shattered Shackle doubles it, so mine would do 100. I actually think that this is probably a mistake on my part. I, I don't know if I thought that I was going to get offered, like, three or four Centaur Hearts between now and later. Um, in shops, specifically. I don't even think that's possible. Uh, so I don't need 887 coin. I probably should have took the Nemesis Crest that strikes from behind. Mm. You know, it's not a run ender that I chose not to take it, but objectively helpful. Dang. 
You're getting through Elysium pretty quick. Also, for anybody who's curious, when you're doing uh, this game, there are a set amount of uh, chambers in each area, right? Um, the first one has like 13 or so. Uh, Asphalt's the shortest. It's single digits. It's like eight or something. Um, but I say that to say that these rooms here, along with the fountain rooms, uh, along with Erebus rooms, all count as chambers. Specifically, these ones in the fountain rooms uh, and the shops, I should say. Actually, that's what I meant, not the Erebus ones, are all chambers that count towards your progress to the boss and have no threat. Uh, and this is actually a, a fun thing. I don't I don't r remember if I did it with the gloves. I think I didn't do it with the gloves when you were on before. But here I get to take the attack one, which almost always you're going to take. Uh, I feel like when you're still learning the game and you're getting better at it, you'll take the defiance one, right? Because it just feels yeah. very safe. I don't get the defiance one in this challenge because mirrorless. Um, but even in this challenge, normally I would lean towards taking the hydraulic gold, which just heals you when you enter an area. But with my confidence with curse slash, I was like, especially if I'm going to be using my attack, I can take the one that buffs my damage. Yeah. Like also, probably. also I figure BAME watching this, he he talks a lot about wanting it to go faster and you know me to get on with things. So. What? No, I'm I, just impressed. I'll I'll help him out. You know. Nah, I'm I'm just teasing for the record. BAME's BAME's the greatest sometimes, kind of. Uh, so for anybody who didn't know, the flame wheels there, they explode when they die, as you can see on the screen there. Uh, and what they normally do is charge at you, although I haven't given one a chance to do that. Um, but their explosion, there it hit me. Uh, but as you can see with the first three that I killed, you can keep them swords length away and still yeah, defeat them. Um, and you can do that with every single weapon. Even the gloves, which are, you know, potentially closer range than the sword. You would think, you would think for sure, but like the, the gloves do have some, some reach on them. Um, you can fade away. Zagreus Nowitzki style with the uppercut. <laughs> you know? Uh, it is weird that I got a room that's seemingly all flame wheels so far. Like, I know it won't be that way forever because the, the other waves will have different enemies. But And again, just a, a little fun thing for anybody who's not familiar. In Hades, the enemies come in waves, but one wave, like that first wave, we'll just say potentially consisted of, let's just say, 25 flame wheels. And they won't put 25 flame wheels on the screen at one time. So even though they were still spawning in individual enemies every time I killed one, that wasn't the end of a wave, you know? So I still only cleared the first wave. Mm -hmm. And now I'm on the second wave. Um, and rooms can have two or three waves. It'll either go first wave and then second wave is the hard wave of the room, or it'll go first wave, the second one is easier than the first one, and then the third one is the hardest of the three. That's good, so then you can just... You can immediately tell, well, not immediately, by the second wave, you'll be able to tell if there's any more. Correct, yep, yeah. That's exactly what goes through my mind, too. If I go to the second wave and it's easier than the first, and I knew that this one would be a three right, right away because the first one was all flame wheels, and they're not going to give you a, a wave that's just less flame wheels than all flame wheels, right? You're not going to go in a room that's just flame wheels the whole time. So I knew that by default it was going to be easier. Um, yeah. Is that a... Um a benefits package thing where like multiple guys come out yeah that is i'm actually glad you pointed that out um so i got in a tough situation here if i didn't have curse slash like i ended up not clearing this room with full health because of it um but obviously uh it's called poppers and there's three fake eyeball guys that you can see on the screen uh, uh and yeah. over a set amount of time they'll just go in place and explode um or if you kill them they'll explode similar to a flame wheel they won't come at you uh and then they also have armor just like uh, the the armored enemy had. And in this situation, he was hovering by the eyeball there. And I think it's because I did knock back on either him or the eyeball. Uh, but he's hovering by the eyeball. So if I didn't have Curse Slash and feel good about taking damage, I would probably avoid going over there and the eyeball would just get a chance to respawn, you know? Um, but here, I just decided I'll just take this 15. I will also point out, and this was the same with the uppercut on the other Daedalus Hammer. Um, I will also point out that the attack healing me for every hit does count for every enemy you hit. It's not every swing you do. So if I hit three enemies with one sword swing, I get plus six, not just plus two. Which, you know, that it kind of feels like that would be how it works, but just for clarification. Damn, White's calling you crazy, dude. I'm, I'm a little crazy, you know. I'm I'm crazy. Correct. Um, so this was 
not the best pool. So I talked about earlier how Breaching Slash is good, especially with me using my attack all the time right now. I don't I I don't have the ability to turn the Discord uh, sounds off now, so they'll they'll be in the video, but it's okay. I'm, you guys. I'm wondering if that's actually mine because I'm getting those notifications. Uh, well, I know I know that mine's turned on, so you don't really have to worry about it. Um, okay. And I don't hear yours coming to me. I just hear mine. Um, but yeah, so there's going to be Discord notifications in this, this video, but everybody loves the sound of Discord notifications. Um, I think Bian hopped out of Discord for a second. He'll he'll be right back though. There he Sorry is. About He's back. <laughs> nah, you're out of Discord by accident. You're fine. Um, Whoops. but yeah, we have the we have the hammer pull on the screen here. Um, Dash Nova, I don't like. Uh, What'd you say? I didn't say nothing. Oh, okay, it sounded like sound came through for a second. Um, yeah, Dash Nova, I don't like because it changes the way that the sword functions. It makes your character leap forward. With this dash, which can probably be useful if you get used to it or anything, but it changes my little attack, attack, dash, or attack, attack, mm -hmm. special combo. Um, breaching slash can be useful, um, in that it does more damage to armor. Uh, but I didn't think that armor was really giving me a lot of trouble, you know? And like I said, it's not useful for every fight. And I've said this before many times, but I feel like the Theseus and Minotaur fight is like a skill check in this game, it's a fairly big skill check. And so it's not useful for that fight. Uh, so I ended up taking Piercing Wave, um, which, as Whitefire just pointed out, it is both nice when you don't have any other damage increases and it gives you extra range, but it really just wasn't an ideal pool for me, right? The Money one would have been nice. The Flurry Slash I'm a big fan of. I, I kind of like all the Flurry attacks in this game. Um, flurry Slash is especially useful for... Flurry Slash, just for clarification, being the one where you get rid of the third attack in your attack combo, but you do the first two just automatically by holding the button down similar to oh, yeah, yeah similar to every other weapons flurry attack that makes it go fast um but yeah so i ended up taking piercing wave and i wasn't really passionate about it. i was kind of disappointed in the second hammer um flurry slash is especially useful is what i was getting ready to say because with the um with the healing it it is faster and it heals you still for every attack so but we take Piercing Wave, which, you know, I'm going to be using my attack, and it just does a little extra damage. The waves that he attacks out when, and you'll see them when I get into the next encounter. The waves that he sends out when he attacks with his attack do not count towards healing me with Curse Slash. So if the wave hits an enemy, that does not heal me. Um, so that's further unfortunate for this build specifically. Yeah. See, um, they got the same benefit package. Uh... They're actually a little bit better than I thought it was, which was that they're basically like a Hydra and all three of them potentially turn into a guy. Good that they don't. No, okay, so yeah, I'm actually glad that you said this, I can clarify. They cannot. The fake ones will only ever explode. They can't go pick up a weapon and become a guy. Um, so yeah, getting the poppers that you saw there, the like fake exploding ones, that's generally something that you're fine with seeing. Uh, seeing three armored great shields is not typically something you're fine with seeing. Yeah, no, it doesn't look fun. Uh, but as you can see there, that dash attack that they're doing, that's Theseus' attack almost to a T. Not literally to a T, but that's that's why we use the word almost. Okay, yeah, so it's the pink glowing ones that are fake. Correct. Them. Yeah, and they explode after a set amount of time, so you don't have to combat them or anything. Wayfire, you must have missed when I talked about the Crystal Laser Guys repeatedly earlier. I used their official name, Crystal Laser Guy. Oh, I thought he meant that you called me Alex at some point. No. <laughs> um, I just doxed myself. Oh, no. Name. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, yeah, and so as you can see, this is... I believe this is the second wave of this one. Um, and you can see the, you get armored great shields in addition to two guys that were making them invincible, which is great. I, you know, I fight an armored great shield and I always just think like, man, I wish that they could turn invincible occasionally. That kind of, the fight's boring if they can't do that. Do you get health back if you hit their shield with your attack? No, the shield has to damage the enemy. Because, uh, your health's looking a little low there, boy. It is. Uh, and we were being kind of lighthearted and just joking, but that was a really bad pool, just in all seriousness. Um, yeah. for anybody who doesn't know, in the Trial of the Gods, when you get two that you have to choose one, and then you end up getting both boons, uh, I don't do any of those in this, because obviously I don't want to get two boons. Um, I do get health for hitting the poppers, the, the fake pink ones, um, mm. which is why I intentionally did that there. Yeah, 
Um, but yeah, in the Trial of the Gods, this isn't super relevant to this video here, but it just reminded me with the invincibility guys. Uh, Athena is basically the equivalent of an invincibility guy being on the screen. That's all she does is turn enemies invincible occasionally. Um, and she also shows you where you're going to do it on the screen, similar to how that bomb explodes. She does like an AoE, and you can just push them out of the way of her AoE. Um... So I say that just to say, again, not super relevant to this run, but just for anybody who's watching who's like curious, QB, how do you handle Trials of the Gods? You always fight Athena because she is effortless. She, do <laughs> she doesn't make the fight harder. Longer, maybe, if you're doing a speed run, but she doesn't make the fight harder. Uh, unless you struggle with invincible enemies because you run at them and get hit. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> but yeah, no. So the, having one of those invincible guys, I'm pretty sure that's their, their official name too, invincible guys. Um, on the screen is the equivalent of fighting Athena in a trial. This, so that last room, you made a good point. You were like, hey, you're kind of not doing so hot. And yeah, that's, that was very accurate. Um, taking damage from the, uh, the great shields. And they do chunky damage, especially when they hit you with their spin because they do an attack and then the spin. Um, it's like a swipe and then a spin. Also here, if you watch my health bar, first of all, uh, shout outs to Supergiant because they're amazing. But shout outs to Supergiant specifically um, because look at my health bar when I get hit. It just looks so cool in my mind, the little, little animation it does. It doesn't just go down and that's it. Uh, it like emphasizes it. But you're going to see these archers just deplete my health bar very fast. Because um, when you stand in front of them and they shoot three times and there's multiple of them on the screen, you know. My goodness. Curse Slash is fun and it's cool. It's not instant win. Um yeah. So yeah, again, why why I say that I want this to like showcase for beginners how they can utilize weapons and get better, you still have to be conscious of what you're doing, even when you can afford to be more aggressive. Specifically with armor, I talk a lot about hit stun in, in all of these series, and that's you know very fun to me. And that's an easy way to get health back against these enemies in general. Is you know, not these enemies, but any enemies in general, uh, is getting them hit stun looped is not only good because they can attack you, but it's good because you're getting health. But you can't do that against armor. You have to respect them. You have to know their attack patterns and learn to avoid them. Because I feel like this game, in its basic form, like in its fundamentals, it's not... You don't pick up this game and be immediately go, how do I hit stun lock enemies, right? No. You're Like, the dash is, is Zagreus' defense. I remember... Uh, again, I shout this out every time Bian's on the channel, but Bian bought this game for me. And I remember not long into it, with Bastion being my favorite single-player game of all time, uh, like, during my first or second run, I was like, uh, where's the block button? <laughs> and Bian pointed out to me he was like no 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 your defense in this game is your dash and for a second I paused and we were just messaging so it wasn't like he saw me pause but for a second I paused and I was just like yeah no you have a dash in Bastion too where's the block button <laughs> um, but no your dash your your defense in this game is avoiding you don't I mean yeah. obviously you can get the shield and you can block and um, hit stun locking is something that I do not for damage output, although sometimes it can also coincide and be the best way to damage people as well. Um, but I do it for the defense of it. But you do have to learn to play the game, the fundamentals, avoiding attacks and such. Yeah, wait, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> you just treat the shield, or not having the shield, like a, uh, like level of heat. Remove block button. Use anything but shield. <laughs> um... It's funny because I did the shield run. Uh, it was like the first one I cleared it with. And I almost never use the block on the shield. And it's not because I don't like blocking. Because again, I love Bastion. And I block in that game. Uh, it's because I don't like that you're forced to dash after you block. Mm. If you could just block with the shield and then not do the follow-up dash, then I would, I would use it more. Which I guess you can with the charge shot. Uh, which is one of my favorite Daedalus hammers for the shield. So that checks out. Coincidentally. Probably. So this is kind of uh, obvious here when you see these two. It's like, which one am I going to take? I have all that money. I want to get as rich as possible. So that's why, no, that's not why I go to that room. Uh, the best thing that I can get from a shop is a centaur heart. So why risk gambling to get the, the centaur right. heart when you can just take yeah. the centaur heart? Uh, but I do want to point out just, again, for anybody who's a beginner and who's curious, you cannot get two of the same item in the shop ever. So you can't be like, oh, what if you went to the shop and got two centaur hearts? Uh, that's that, that can't happen, unfortunately. Except maybe in the end shop. Um, in the stick shop. Uh, yeah, maybe. I know you can get two of the same thing in the stick shop. Uh, I don't know if it can be hearts. 
Although I don't know if you can get two of the exact same thing, because I know you can get like a boon from Athena and an enhanced boon from Athena. Like the one that costs 150 and the one that costs 300. I don't know if you can get two of the same god that costs 150, you know? Same thing with pomegranates. I think you can get two of the pomegranates that cost extra. I don't This is not super important to this fight right here. No, um, okay. So we were talking a lot about Theseus earlier, but this is uh, not the Theseus your, your dad knows. Your daddy's Theseus. There we go. You had it for me. That's, that's what I appreciate about you. Um, <laughs> yeah, Theseus may be your daddy, but this isn't your daddy's Theseus. Uh, no, this is not the Theseus that that, that we were referencing earlier. Um, and I've said this a bunch on the stream, but I think this Theseus is probably easier. Um, he's not really a threat. The attack that he hits me the most with is his machine gun, which is also his weakest attack. So it's the one that I'm least worried about getting hit from. Um, one thing that I will talk about uh, is their Theseus is being a buddy by just getting in Asterius' way. Um, actually, one thing I will talk about that is not at all what I was going to say. Why does it say the Minotaur up top? His yeah. name is Asterius. Can we can we just yeah. show him a little bit of respect? I guess it's just because he's the Bull of Venus, so he's the Minotaur. I don't know. I feel like I feel like he's earned a little more respect, right? Oh goodness, Wi-Fi. Uh, um, yeah, no, but on, on the topic of this fight, one thing that I actually was going to say before I transitioned 17 times was you'll see in the top left corner that I have Antos up there, which summons Achilles for me, and I haven't used that at all in this run. Um, but for this fight specifically, a lot of people like to use the summon that they have at the beginning of the fight while the enemies are just standing there together saying, please hit me. Um, and I don't do that because I want to wait specifically for the Minotaur's second phase where I think he's more difficult to deal with. Um, and then I summon Antos out. So that's just the thought there. Uh, I do that almost every single... I, I don't even think almost. Literally every single one of the runs that I do. But I just think it's important, again, for anybody who's just kind of watching. Yeah. I guess it could be a good time to talk about why I use Antos. Um, so using Antos has a few benefits. There's five of them in total. Uh, one of them is Dusa, who just sends out a bunch of little projectiles similar to the other Gorgons. That's what they're called? Gorgons? Um, yeah, that's what they are. I was going to say, yeah, there's a question mark at the end. I feel like I said that vaguely confident. Uh, but yeah, no, so she is, she's, you know, if you like do so or you want to stun enemies in a regular room, have fun, right? That almost, that looked like it, that looked like it said 166 damage. I know it was just two cases of 16, but right there, yeah. I was like, oh my goodness, I'm dead. <laughs> That's, you know? He said yes. Put, I am Asterius. Put some respect on my name. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Deuce is not really one you're ever going to take on a challenge like this, I don't feel like. Um, I should clarify, everything that I say is in my opinion. So I'm not like, oh, you can't take this. Or somebody could make an argument for it for all I know. But in my opinion, from what I'm familiar with, yeah, you wouldn't take Deuce on something like this. Um, same with Skelly. Skelly functions as a distraction, which you know, I can imagine if you were doing a difficult challenge and you had still like a crazy build, like you weren't doing Boonless, for instance then maybe Skelly could be the best because he distracts the enemy, which means they're not going to hit you if they're dangerous with hard labor or something. And also, you can get good damage output while they're going for Skelly. But in something like this, he, he's basically pointless. Um, not basically pointless. That's not a good way of putting it. He's basically obsolete compared to the other ones. Um, right. So that leaves you with three. And all three of those are... All three of the remaining ones are viable. They're things that you definitely could take. I also just want to point out while I'm talking about this that I've gotten hit a bunch in this fight. And this is just a showcase for how good Curse Slash is. Right, I took 166 damage earlier, and I'm at full health. Um, can you imagine? Oh my goodness. So, for anybody who doesn't know, the bombs that he has there, I don't even have hard labor on, which increases the damage that enemies do. The bombs that he has right there do 50 apiece. Can you imagine if I was standing in the middle of that? Oh, yeah, you'd be dead. <laughs> Theseus can do a better chunk damage output than uh, Hades can. The problem is, it's too predictable. Um, ah, Hades is pretty predictable too. Too slow and predictable. But yeah, I was talking about the, the summons. Um, that leaves you with Thanatos, Meg, and uh, Antos. For a while, Meg was my favorite. She does 2500, uh, and she does it pretty quickly, and she does it in a wide horizontal. It's like in the fights with the Furies when they do their circles on the ground. 
It's like mm -hmm. those for an entire horizontal length of a room. Um, not the giant circles, but you know, the smaller ones. Um, so it's pretty good about hitting and it comes out relatively fast. Not instantly, but relatively fast. Um, it's just so funny to me that he's just absolutely useless while they were mad. Yeah, and this is also, I think you specifically asked me about this last time. You yeah, said, uh, why don't I trail behind him when he when he does this attack? And I was like, it's, it's just too risky. It's not worth the 50. But with Curse Slash and with it being Theseus, even 50 is not a threat. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, if you stay directly behind him, you will literally never get hurt. It takes so long to hit the ground. For clarification, in regards to what we're talking about, just for anybody who's curious, the threat is not just that the bombs take so long. It's that if I didn't kill him there, he can just stop at any point between mm -hmm. any two pillars. And you can't bump into him. That damages you. Oh, uh, uh, that I didn't realize. You know, and he won't turn directly around 180 degrees and attack you. But, like, you know, he can move and he can face forward. He can shoot different, you know, his machine guns, so on and so forth. He can also just stand in place, and now he's an obstacle while you're trying to dodge. So, so that's the thought process there. Like, yes, if I knew he was going in a circle and I knew when exactly he would stop, yeah, like you're saying, if you're close enough to him, you're fine. Um, but yeah, so you have Megara, you have Thanatos, and you have... Uh, Thanatos does his big circle attack from when you see him fight in a room. Not the one that isolates an enemy and does 9,999, but the one that does a big circle. Um, and does 9,900... I didn't... The damage wasn't relevant to say out loud. They both do the same damage. Um, Dionysus was a good pull here because I'm, I'm kind of scattered conversation right now, but uh, Dionysus was a good pull there because there was points where he just didn't even attack where I was standing uh, versus somebody like Artemis who would trail you. So I kind of have to move while hitting Theseus versus Dionysus just let me stand next to him and hit him. Um, but yeah, you call two of them, but well, that's because uh, the Achilles one that I have summons Patroclus and Achilles. And I don't feel like saying both names every time. Um, well, I mean, you also call it just Achilles sometimes. I mean, I every time you do, I think Achilles and Astropolis. <laughs> whatever, <laughs> you know, whatever with both of you. Um, <laughs> I don't know if everybody knows this because I'm really silly and I didn't notice this for the longest time. Uh, so when I thought that when Theseus got the gods, he just got the benefit of like the attacks are doing, like the circles on the ground that I have to avoid that do damage to me. But he also gets their status effect as well. He lands a hit on me and he implies hangover the same way that you would if you had Dionysus mm -hmm. on your side. And that works with the other characters as well. Like if he has Athena, he gets deflect uh, for a second um, when he's doing like his spin attack. Uh, he can inflict chill, I believe, with Demeter. Um, he can inflict doom. He can, I believe he can crit with Artemis. I'm not certain about that because who gets hit when, when he has Artemis? Hers, hers is pretty easy to dodge. Um... Can you imagine if Theseus crit though? He can crit. Okay, yeah, we have confirmation from the chat. He can't crit. That that's kind of threatening on a run like this, right? Imagine if he had Artemis and he hit me with like his spin attack with all the hits. Um, but yeah, so eventually I'm gonna finish my thought on the uh, the companion that you get, but probably maybe never. Um, so yes. Also, is it Patroclus or is it Petrocles? I call them Petrocles. I don't know how to properly pronounce it. I, like, that's just the way I'm used to saying it in my head. Um, Patroclus, okay. I say that's the way I'm used to saying it in my head, but I probably heard one of the characters say that, and that's why I was confident saying it that way. Uh, okay. all right. um, so we didn't talk about this at all, but obviously when I'm doing this run, I have to sell my boons. Um, and the boons still give you money, although as we've seen, who spends money ever, right? Not me. I'm a, I'm a savings account kind of guy. <laughs> And check the shop. And at this point, if I don't take everything, I'm silly. I think I don't take the cast because I just don't care about the cast. Has this been an all cast list run so far? Um, I think it has. But yeah, I take the health just because why not? And then take the attack because why not? Um, but I take the say I don't take the cast because I'm a I'm a savings account kind of guy. Uh, don't need it. There's been a couple of these runs in this series where they could have, I could have tagged on a special little thing. Like for the bow, I almost could have said no using special in the title as well. Cause I basically didn't use it the entire time, but there was like one stray time that I destroyed projectiles with it in Tartarus or something. And then for this one, I probably throw my cast randomly at Hades or something, you know? Um, there's a lot of them where I could say like castless or specialist or attackless, depending on which weapon I'm using. Um, I'm going to finish my companion thought eventually, probably maybe, right? Uh, yeah, so you have three remaining ones, which is Meg, 
uh, Thanatos and Achilles, for, so I can avoid some criticism. Um, Meg does 2,500, and she does it pretty quick and pretty reliably. Uh, what's his face? Thanatos does 3,500, which is the most damage that you can do, but his is the most delayed by far. It is the, a big AoE, but, like, Hades can just, he can just leave. <laughs> you can do it, and he can say, see you later. Um, You're too slow. Yeah, he can also say that, right? Um... And that's just upsetting. When I'm purposely not doing tight deadline and somebody tells me I'm too slow. I'm like, come on now, man. Um, and that's not just Hades for the record. Like, you know, the, the Furies could just dodge it. Um, so my long-winded way of saying the reason that I take Antos is because A, it can be used on Meg. You can't use the you can't use Meg's on Meg or any of the Fury sisters. Uh, she won't attack her sisters. Um, so if for whatever reason I was struggling, I think I may have did that in one one time in the series when I was low health. Um so yeah, it can be used on Meg. It does more damage than Meg's does anyway. So even if you weren't worried about Tardis, which I've said multiple times, you kind of sort of shouldn't be. Um, it does less damage than Meg's. If both hits hit the same enemy because it does 1500 twice, which if you're fighting a boss, ideally you would want to use it in a situation where it's going to hit both enemies. Um, or it's going to hit the same enemy twice, I meant. Um, and then Thanatos is just too slow to be reliable. I'd like to be able to, especially because I'm using damage control is another point. And that's why I didn't use it at the beginning of the Theseus fight. Damage control is the thing that makes the enemies get two attacks that they can take without taking damage. Um, so I can't pop it at the beginning of a fight without having hit the enemy twice. Um, and Achilles one tracks enemies. So I was talking about Megs is a horizontal blah blah blah. And uh, Thanatos is a big circular AoE. But Than or Achilles just tracks directly to an enemy and hits them. Uh, right. So that's why I prefer that. It does more damage than Meg. It uh, tracks and immediately attacks, or not immediately, but attacks substantially faster than Thanatos. So, I just think it's the best for this challenge. I used Megs for the longest time myself, because I like to just pop it at the beginning of the fight and not have to strategically think about using it. But especially once you're doing Boonless and Mirrorless, you have a lot less strategy to have to think about in regards to options of things you can do for attacking and such. Um, I, I wanted to eventually finish my companion points, so we didn't really talk about sticks so much so far, but... Uh, guess what? Curse Slash is pretty good for sticks, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so many enclosed spaces, you're just hitting people all grouped together. Um, and, and even something like the poison. Earlier and right there on Q, I get poisoned and I just make up the difference so fast. Normally poison is a big deal. For me, at least, in sticks. I, I don't like poison. Man, that must have caught a lot, cost a lot for the infrastructure for all those guillotines. <laughs> what a weird intricate contraption that is. It's crazy to think that these fights that we're doing right now, these are not the work of Hades. Like he doesn't he doesn't support the satyrs and the, the vermin, like in the story. So that means that like some actual person is building all of this. This oh, isn't God. Yeah, this isn't the underworld like commissioning this. Same with the lasers before. With uh, And that's a good example of when you were saying, like, will this be uh, slow like Gilgamesh was when I was, like, taking forever and because it's a melee weapon and rounding about. But do you remember how scared I was of those lasers with Gilgamesh? Yeah. And it's like, now I'm like, yeah, it's okay. I'll just sit there and eat 60 damage worth. I bet it's Karen funding all of it. Karen? Why? Why would he want to prevent Zag? Also, you're getting real staticky uh, again. I don't know how you fixed it before, but it's really bad. Uh, it, it was just Discord. <laughs> um, maybe if I focus Discord. Uh, huh. I actually don't know. Yeah, it's still pretty bad if you want to work on that. But in the meantime, uh, you know, I, I keep pointing out that, like, oh, Curse Slash helps, Curse Slash helps. It's, it's gone, Bian. Um, Curse Slash helps so much, and it does... But I do want to keep pointing out that a lot of what I've done has also just been... Oh, it's it's back. It's gone. I don't know what's going on. It's because I muted it. Hold on. I'm trying to figure out what it's doing. Um, it's not, oh, now it's gone. All right. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I just do nothing, and it just goes away. Hey, man. That's, that's Discord. Look at that pose. Look at that superhero pose. I, I see it. That's cute. I was trying to think. I was like, it's kind of not the superhero pose, like the Iron Man landing. Uh, it's, it reminds me more of like if you're Quicksilver or something you're about to take off. Um, oh, we got the best part of the game again. So if we got all if we got all focus our attention upon this uh, this fish, this bloody ghostly hand sticks fish. 
There we go. I think the stone wall may be my favorite looking one. It's really cool. Actually, I'm going to back up just to show show him some respect. Look, we, Believe it. We don't need we don't need to put respect on Asterius's name. We need to put respect on Stonewall's name. Stonewall. But no, yeah, I just want to point out, like, yeah, I'm able to make Curse Slash work. But a lot of times you'll see when I take big chunky damage, I immediately go back to, like, my more regular style gameplay of, like, okay, you're being too aggressive. So, again, just for anybody who's watching this and, you know, wants to learn how to function at this game, and it's not just like, oh, take Curse Slash. It's like, yeah, you know, you got to be on your P's and Q's. Um, those big chunky damages that I'm taking at times can be very costly. Also, for anybody who's taking Curse Slash, me getting it as the first one that I got, the first hammer, is uh, less ideal because you don't have a chance to build up your max health. Um, so, thankfully, I got that 50 health right from the start, which was fantastic. Uh, but otherwise, if it took 60% of 50, I would have 20 health. It's probably really good specifically against those rats, too. Just because normally, they'd like shoot poison everywhere and you have to avoid them to some extent. Yep. That's how you can just get in the poison and just attack them constantly and not even care about it. Yeah. And then just kill yourself right after the period. No, it's, it's absolutely what you just said. In addition to uh, the fact that they're tanky, so they're just a lot of hits. Yeah. Now, mind you, again, for anybody who's who's checking this out, the poison can stack. So if you step into multiple poison uh, puddles, it's going to go from one damage to two damage per tick to three damage per tick, so on and so forth. Um, but, like, by default, it does one. So, you know, it's good for you to... You hit rapidly for two, and you're counteracting it, basically. Right. Uh, as you can see, Bian gave us a beautiful little ooh there because we got uh, a two-sack, which is the... Uh, Seder Sack in the second room, which is the earliest that it can possibly have. You cannot get a Seder Sack in the first room, just for anybody who's uh, curious. Um, I go over here and I buy the diamond because none of those other things are good for me, and I deserve it. I'm a superstar. Give me a diamond. <laughs> Treat yeah. you. Right? I'm the son of the god of jewelry or whatever. Give it to me. There we talked to everybody's favorite character, Cerberus, and he had somewhere to be. He had a meeting, so he, he, he dipped out of our way, thankfully. He sober rushed off. I said it, but it, the, with how I said it, it sounded more like brushed. Anyway. So this is another example. When I was just playing through this game, when I was first starting, I would, uh, I say first starting, but basically by first starting, I just mean like when I was playing casually before I got into doing any like specific high heat challenges. Um, when I would start this fight off, I would just pop Mega Ro right away. Because I'm like, he's not going to move mm -hmm. fast enough at the beginning. Right. And it's 2,500 damage. And I'm not going to have to remember to use it during the fight now. I know that I took advantage of it and used it. Um, also, for anybody who wants to do a challenge like this or just any difficult challenge, I would say don't go into the final fight with four of your companions left. You should have utilized them. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's just my fault. Um, although, maybe not necessarily. Because I don't know if I would have got two sticks mini bosses. And then I would be thankful that I had them, right? Because I'll, oh, I'll only have three after this, which means if I were to have gotten two sticks, I would have only wasted one, you know? Right. So if you don't feel like you need them, then hang on to them. Um, but yeah, as, I, as you can see, I ran over and immediately got rid of his damage control. And then immediately took 40 damage, because I'm good at this game. <laughs> well, then just hit him 20 times and you're back. Yep. Which, again, uh, Flurry Slash would have been better in that how fast it gives you the... Uh, the health back, but I'm kind of thankful that I didn't get it. Also, I think it's just better damage output because uh, it's 30 per hit, so you're doing 60 per hit, and those hits are coming fast. Um, but I'm kind of thankful I didn't get it to to showcase the sword better, right? So as much as I'm saying like you don't have to rely on Curse Slash, even though I kind of am playing that way with my playstyle here, you don't have to rely on Flurry Slash either. Ooh, ooh, eight, eight, eight. And with the damage I'm taking right here, this is just Curse Slash gameplay. The fact that I can just get in his face. Like, I took a bunch of damage. It's like, wow, that's really bad. But it's also like, yeah, what of it? <laughs> um, You're like their old Wolverine. Basically, that's actually a really good comparison. Although he looks more like Wolverine with Gilgamesh. Yeah. If we have any Marvel Ultimate Alliance fans, uh, I like that game series. And Wolverine's fun to play in them, usually, Ooh. sometimes. <laughs> if you didn't have a shtick, I'd say we should do that. If you've got a shtick. Eh, we could on Discord sometimes. 
Uh, that's actually a, uh, an important thing. You see how I took advantage of there. I didn't get him with that uh, projectile there at the end of kill, which would have looked really cool. I'd have been like, dang, look at me. Walk away, flick a projectile at him, take out that skull. Um, no, but just an important thing to note, and I, I, I know I talked about this with the Gilgamesh one as well, but with the sword here is uh, Hades skulls are enemies. So anything that you get from doing to an enemy, so like in my case, obviously that would be healing with this or healing with Gilgamesh. Um, but also if you were using uh, Ares, for instance, you had Ares boons. There's one that's when you kill an enemy, your next attack does like plus 100% damage or something like that. You can kill a skull and then land a strong hit on Hades himself. Um, just something to consider. His skulls are enemies. His vases, vases that he summons later are not. Uh, so same thing that I just said would not apply. I won't get healed from hitting them and uh, they wouldn't count for the Ares boon either. I will say, I don't know about other people utilizing it because I don't know if I ever really took advantage of this... Uh, the projectile su su sword Daedalus hammer before. Um, I will say that it was kind of hard to steer it. So the way that I utilized it was not as a projectile. Because you can't aim it like you can aim like a, a shot with the other actual projectiles in this game. So I utilized yeah, it just by... Your melee, right? What was that? Just an extension of your regular melee, basically. Exactly, yeah. I just use it as like functionally like piercing on my melee attack to hit enemies behind or just to straight up do extra damage point blank on somebody. So really, it was just a damage buff to me. It is nice that it's a separate hit. In general, when you... Um, that's interesting, Wi-Fire. Uh, in general, when you can do the same amount of damage two different ways, but one of those ways involves hitting multiple times and the other one doesn't, you're going to want to do the one that involves hitting multiple times. So like, for instance, Arthur does a lot of damage. That's a hidden aspect of the sword. It can do a single swipe that does like 100 damage or something. Um... If I had a weapon that could do 50 damage twice in that same amount of time, that's more optimal. Um, because it can get rid of, like, damage control or potentially break armor, you know, so on and so forth. And obviously the hit stun that I talk about all the time. Um, right. But in general, the multi-hits are going to be preferred if it's the same DPS, of course. Um, and I'm not just saying that to say Arthur sucks. Arthur's mad fun. You should all play Arthur. Um, I considered doing this with Arthur for this challenge as well. Um, Arthur is one of my favorites with how chunky it feels to hit with. But the point was more so if you have the choice, like, in the middle of a run, right? Like, for instance, it, with Flurry Slash, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. Or with this one hitting multiple times is also nice. Versus, like, you can get uh, Big Chop, for instance, uh, which makes him just do that overhead attack that you see, but it does, like, 90 damage. Uh, but it's slow, and that's the only one that does. It also slows it down. It's not as fast as you're seeing it right there. And again, I'm not saying to never use Big Chop. You know, if that's your playstyle, that's your playstyle. I'm just saying there's benefits to choosing the, the other way to do it, you know? Yeah, and that's a good point that Wi-Fi is saying there. Um, not necessarily relevant exactly to what I just said, but yeah, it it's also doesn't have very much spread. Because it gets rid of your horizontal arcing swing. Right. Um, for anybody who wants to see how to avoid... Hades like traditional attack patterns and how to get his pattern recognition down and how to kite him and take advantage of him uh, You're probably gonna watch the other probably gonna want to watch the other videos in the series because I haven't been doing that super well in this fight I'm gonna get in his face um, And that's not just to plug myself, but that's to say that like he does have patterns and openings Specifically like his big spin attack that he does. That's the one where he's gonna stand in place for the longest um, But the other ones in the other videos you'll see me not even attempt to deal with them but his other attacks, uh, like his little dash attack that he does, where he like dashes and attacks very straightforward, um, he's vulnerable after that as well. He's just vulnerable for a shorter time. So if you wanted to be optimal, like DPS wise, you would sneak an attack there and then still get out of time, get out of the way. Especially if you have multiple dashes, which I do not right now because of mirrorless. Um, but that's just something to consider, like memorizing his patterns. Like I know he's going to be stunned there for an extended period of time, and usually when I'm doing a run. I know almost exactly how many hits I can get in with my weapon after he does that big attack. Yeah. Um, you got them Dark Souls uh, instincts. Which is funny because that's a series that I've barely played. Wait, yeah. A little bit of Demon Souls and that's it. I say a little bit. I think I've defeated like six bosses. I don't know if that's a little bit. I always like get into the, those games and then fall off and then never come back to them. And I feel like they're way longer than 
where I end up getting to, but I feel like I've played for a long time. So. Yeah, that's fair. I can see that with that with that game design. So the, like <laughs> I will say again, just for anybody who's watching this and just kind of wants, wants to like learn about Hades or his his patterns, his his fight style, so on and so forth. Since I'm not really going over that too much with this, I'm just kind of showing you how to take advantage of Curse Slash and how to do good damage output with a sword. Um, this attack that he does here is one that was probably the last one that I personally learned while watching him because it's a combination of two other attacks that he does. You're going to see, if you look at Hades in the bottom of the screen right now, he's going to summon a skull up and summon a skull down. He might have already summoned the skull down, I don't know. But he summons two skulls in a line in opposite directions of his body. Um, and then he does a dash attack towards you in whatever way that you are to him. Um, so the little skull summons, he does them pretty quick there, but he can just summon a skull. That's a normal attack of his as well. And then that dash attack that he's doing right there is, again, a normal attack of his. So it's just a combination of those two, which is what throws me off uh, or threw me off for the longest time. So just be aware of when he's throwing a skull to make sure he's not doing this one. He fires it pretty quick, so it's something that you can note. Um, but he's both punishable after throwing a skull or after doing this a dash attack that he's doing right now. Just be aware that he's not doing the combo, you know? Also something to keep in mind is that if he is, if you do know he's throwing two skulls, you know that he's going to dash attack towards you. There are times, I don't know if I did it there when I was just talking, I wasn't paying attention. Um... And there's an example of me, like, still, I'm at almost full health, but I still make a conscious decision to avoid everything here. This is just me trying to brag on myself. I can be a little careful if I want to. You, know, you dash through this ring. That thing explodes. Don't get hit by the orbs. Don't get hit by the bomb. Um, but, yeah, just be aware of what he's doing. If he's throwing two bombs, you know he's going to dash at you, and you should know, you know, if you want to get better at the game, if you want to learn to fight Hades, you should know the distance that he dashes, and he'll be vulnerable after that dash for a short period of time, not the period of time as the big swing. And I know when I had Zach on here, he just kept referring to this as like, oh, you have the knowledge, the knowledge, the, like, you know all this stuff. And it's like, I guess that's true, but I know this stuff because the game is fun to play. Yeah, I feel like you don't necessarily know this stuff, you feel this stuff. Yeah, that's fair. Although I do think that my knowledge, if that's the, you know, word we want to use for it, I think that's a, I think, I definitely just said think. I think that's a better advantage for me as a player than somebody who just has really good like execution i don't think i'm flawless like I, i'm getting a, a hit a lot in this because i have curse slash and i'm not just trying to say that as like an excuse for myself i mean you can see that i keep building my health back up and i'm able to be careful when i need to um but i'm getting hit a lot in this because i can afford to because i have curse slash but in general like i don't think my execution is my single most impressive thing in the world uh i think it's more my knowledge what did i want to back up for here a second ago i don't remember <laughs> you know? Oh, I think I was just going to back up to showcase. <laughs> yeah, he said that because he got a family feud answer wrong. <laughs> um, but no, I think I was just going to back up to showcase that after he throws a skull, he, he is vulnerable for a short second. And then after he does his dash attack, he's vulnerable for a little bit longer of a time period. And then when he does his spin attack, he's vulnerable for the longest time period. And then obviously there's other intricacies that you can learn during the fight. Like when he gets into second phase, what changes? For instance, he does his big swing after his big uh, circle after two attacks. He doesn't just do it when it's mm -hmm. by itself um here is an example of what i was saying earlier so when i said that throwing a skull is a standard attack but then also doing the double skull and a dash attack is a attack that's in his arsenal here he throws a skull just the standard throw a skull attack and then does the double skull into dash attack so ultimately three skulls come out and you kind of just have to be aware that that's something he can do you know like he throws yeah. one skull which he throws at me and for the record that's another thing that you can note if he throws it directly at you and you didn't dash, like you weren't circling him because if you're circling him it can end up coming towards you as well but if you weren't doing something to make him have it come towards you if he aims at you then he's not doing the double one just a way to tell them apart um because on the double one he aims perpendicular to me see i'm over here and he's going to aim both uh, up yeah. and down um yep, yep, yep. the first one he would have thrown at me but it hit the wall there um but yeah so then he does that and i know he's going to do the dash attack as well and i know he's going to dash attack into that wall and so i can comfortably then dash over into him just the things to consider. And then he did another skull after that. So he did a skull and then a double skull dash and then another skull. So there's four skulls. Thankfully, that wall was there and he was contained. So everything ended up around itself. Mm -hmm. But again, just, you know, things to think about.
And a lot of, and this is so silly and cliche to like improving in anything, but you were saying like it's instinct or experience or like, you know, you get it by feel, I think may have been how you phrased it. Um, but a lot of it is also, I'm a very competitive person in life, right? And there's another four skulls. Thank you very much. Um, I've seen you around enough for one person in people's lifetime. Say that again? I've seen you hop around enough for any one person <laughs> in any single lifetime while playing video games. Oh, goodness. Um, the point that I was going to make, the, the cliche thing that I referenced a moment ago, was I'm very competitive, and so I can think about this with, like, team sports and stuff, uh, or even just individual sports. But it's the phrase of, like, you win or you learn. And I hate how corny it sounds, but it absolutely applies. So the things that I'm learning by instinct or experience or feel, you're going to learn them the most. You're going to learn the lessons the hardest when you die to that, right? Or take big damage or make a mistake. So, like, obviously, I feel like most people that go into the Hades fight for the first time ever, you're probably going to get hit by his big circle attack, and you're probably going to hate yourself forever because of it, right? <laughs> yeah. Anybody who's, I, I'm very familiar. Anybody who's played this game, we still hate ourselves forever for the first time we got hit by that big spin attack, right? 40 damage what um but yeah so like you learn that immediately and you're like okay when there is a circle trace on the screen on the screen i have to get out of dodge right and that's the same way that i learned all this other stuff i didn't study tape i mean i could have but i didn't um i just enjoyed playing this game so i was like oh he fired a skull not not near me that's weird why did he do that right you just it sounds kind of silly but it's it's a combination of two things it's like a pay attention to what you're fighting don't just blindly swing Right? That's when I was like, oh, he threw it not near me. That's different. And then B, when you get hit by something, learn why. And then you won't get hit by it again. It's like adjusting in an actual like martial arts battle. Especially because you are versus... It's PvE. It's not versing an actual person. So you don't have to get in Hades' head. He only does what he does. He's just a pattern that you have to recognize. Uh, I don't know about that. Speaking from experience as a robot, I think getting in a robot head is very, very useful. Yeah? Yeah. It's one of my weaknesses. And this this one was a silly thing here, but like again, just something that somebody could keep in note if they were playing this. I knew that the way that the collision detection worked in the game. Also, I just noticed the little face on the pillar there. That's cute. Um, I knew the way that the collision detection worked in this game that he wasn't gonna make his spin dash down towards me on this. Right? He's next to it, and like if you're just thinking literally, he should be able to dash over to me. That is, yeah. I just know how the game functions. He wasn't gonna make it. Versus somebody else might have, like, went up behind the pillar themselves to be safe. Like, went to the upper right. Um, yeah. And then wouldn't have been able to maybe dash over and get damage. Just, again, things to consider. I think, so, in this fight, I've been talking a lot about things to consider. And for people who are just kind of tried checking the game out or want to beat Hades or, you know, want to learn how to do hard challenges. And that's kind of one of the big driving reasons behind why I did this. Because I stopped playing Hades well before I did these challenges. I was, like, done with the game, Right. I basically went 100% of it other than like badges and such. Um, not and such, other than badges. Um, I was comfortable with all I did. And then people mentioned some difficulty challenges. And I was like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> and then I kind of sort of got into a little community. Uh, shout out to Cortenberry, actually, which uh, Whitefire's mod there. Shout out to Whitefire. He's pretty cool, too. Um, which is, you know, not centered around Hades. But uh, Cortenberry, for clarification, is a voice actress for this game, for Aphrodite and uh, Dusa. Um, and... You know, I started seeing a lot of Hades, and I started getting more into the community. I joined the Hades itself Discord, which is the Supergiant Discord. And I just started hearing people talk about it, and I'm just like, oh, I have thoughts. And not I have thoughts like I want to argue with people or I want to, like, make myself look good. I have thoughts that other people might benefit from, you know? And this is a good showcase for that because with Curse Slash, I can afford to take all the damage. So we don't have to be like, oh close call look what i did it's more like i can just talk in general about things and i this is another example of me saying doing what i said earlier of like pay attention when you're fighting and learn things i can literally just watch hades for this whole fight because i don't have to worry about myself oh albus i locked you in here come here bud that would that would be the robot guest talking to his robot cat <laughs> no he's not a robot he's a real cat um so this is something that we didn't see and i think you didn't see this maybe maybe you did i think you did um I know you know this exists, but this is me doing the hug technique against Hades, which I didn't do very often during these because I did it last. Yeah, I wasn't sure if it was your stream or someone else's, um, but I guess it makes sense for yours because you ended up being the two weapons that I could heal myself with. Yeah. Um, but this is, again, for anybody who's curious or didn't know, you can get inside of this attack, uh, like inside of where the rings launch and damage him. 
And I was confident doing it with this one again because I could afford to take damage. In general, I would just hide behind the pillars because it's safe. And that's just kind of the way that I operate. I'm not worried about beating him with efficiency. I'm worried about beating him with certainty. But it kind of takes his best attack. And this is an interesting thing to think about when you're playing video games as well. For the record, earlier I said he does three attacks and then his uh, spin. He can also still do his spin without doing the three attacks. Um, he just added another combo to his arsenal, you know. I will say if, if you're me and you want to attempt to do something like this where you hug Hades, I uh, get very close before doing it. Like, I walk up to him to make sure that I can't shimmy any closer. Um, that was also a bad usage of Achilles for the record. I think I may have popped it because I forgot that I even had it. Similar to how I forgot I had it this entire run. Um, uh, I could be if my name was Spot, but that's, or if my cat's name was Spot, but he's not. His name is Albert. Um, but this is specifically a bad usage of Achilles because he just summoned a skull. And Achilles will attack the skulls because, again, they are an enemy in the game's programming. Um, and that's something I forgot to mention earlier when talking about the summon that I chose. Uh, the Achilles attack attacks twice. And I said you want it to hit the same enemy twice. Ideally, you want it to hit the scariest enemy on the screen twice. Um, if there are two enemies, it will always target two separate enemies. It will not. There's not a chance that it will hit the same enemy twice. If it has the option to go after two different people, it will do two different people. Yeah, I saw that. That was pretty cute. What did you talk about? Yeah. Uh, something, this happened in a different run, so I was able to point it out there, but again, anybody's just checking out the sword, maybe you're out there and you're like, I play sword only. Similar to like an umbrella only run on death store. Um, something else of note is that if I used Achilles while he was doing his fire beam attack, uh, it doesn't work. I don't know the reasoning or the mechanics behind that, but Achilles won't hit Hades while he's doing his big fire beam attack. He'll just, okay. he'll just hit the air nearby you and not nearby Hades. And that's why I like to try and make sure I'm as close as possible, because there I wasn't. The Hades, like, glitched out a little bit there. That was kind of weird. I didn't notice it. I think it was, like, a tree with, like, hearing and hearing. go back for it. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was. You're right. Which is crazy, because this game is, like, absurdly polished. So, obviously, I took a little unnecessary damage there, so I was like, oh, let me just beat up this skull. Um, that's another thing to note is, uh, again, for anybody who's checking this, this out to like, you know, get tips or learn how to, to play a little better is to notice when Haiti is summoning his bases. He can do it when he's far away from you. If you're like, he could be off screen cause you're so far to the right and he's on the left or something like that. Mm -hmm. And if you're like, nothing's going on, something should be going on is the thing. And if nothing's going on, you should have been able to attack him specifically if you weren't using the sword even. If he was all the way on the left, dash over and get some bow strikes in if you're using the bow. You know, throw your spear if you have the spear. Um, you shouldn't just let him summon bases. Uh, you should also know the timing on it. You should know the pose that he does. Not saying you should, like you're obligated to do this, but like if you want to improve, these are things that you could consider. Um, you know, the pose that he does when he's summoning them, obviously you could also just see them coming out of the ground. Um, and know that once the, the vases, vases are fully out of the ground, he is fully not doing that attack anymore. Now he's moving. Obviously there he decided to walk for a second, so you know he didn't attack, but he could have attacked immediately after the bases were finished coming out of the ground. So I mentioned earlier that the adds in the first phase of this fight are potentially the most dangerous uh, part of this fight. And if it's not those, it's this. It's him having the vases out while him attacking and the skull attacking. Basically whatever's gonna be the most dangerous is as many threats as possible at the same time as possible. Um, they're pretty invasive, yeah, I, I, I'd say. Um, and for clarification earlier, I said that the vases uh, do not count as enemies, um, but you can attack them to get rid of them. Something of note earlier, I don't, I didn't point it out at the time, but when he hits you with Boiling Blood, which is essentially Hades' cast, um, for anybody who doesn't know, the Hades fight is especially cool because he's similar to Zagreus. Um, he's got, like, standard attacks and specials and a cast. Um, and if you, if you do EM4, he has a summon. Uh, and I guess his uh, he's got like a call using uh his darkness. Anyway, oh yeah. What did I what did I want to back up for? Oh, with the boiling blood. I just want to clarify that uh, if you get hit by boiling blood, you take double damage from Hades attacks. I got hit by one of his ads earlier and didn't take or like a wave on the ground or something like that. 
don't take mm-hmm. double damage. Um, but if he hits you with your spend attack, I'd take 80 as opposed to 40. That's a lot of damage. So just something to be mindful of. I mean, obviously, ideally, just don't don't get hit by anything ever. <laughs> um, but maybe, like, if you do happen to get hit by Boiling Blood, which is his cast, his, his skulls, uh, you know, make a higher effort to avoid him. If you have a choice between him and, like, a wave on the ground, just tank the wave right. on the ground. Um, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, I was just talking about, like, you can destroy the vases yourself and also be mindful that he can destroy the vases just as well as you can. Um, and you can take advantage of that. Like, you can get him to spin into the vases, for instance, or his beam attack and hit the vases. Um, but, yeah, that's the end of that one. I was uh, just slightly disappointed that uh, I didn't manage to, in either of the runs where I could heal myself, I didn't manage to beat him with full health so that I could be like, yeah, I beat the... Beat the whole challenge. 30 to eat. Boomless mirrorless. Ended with full health. Uh, yeah. Uh, as you... Well, I guess it's not clarified on the screen there at all. But the sword was the last one I did. Uh, all the other ones had 32. I mentioned this before. Um, Thank you, White. You can see in the other video files that at the end... Uh, like when I did the shield, the spear, and the bow, and the blade, and Francis, They would all still say like 19 highest heat or something like that. Because doing boomless and mirrorless on 32 heat, I thought was the best way to do 32 heat for the first time ever for some weapons. I thought that made a lot of sense. But yeah, being any uh, any thoughts on that? You, I, I feel like you said it was more fun than uh, than like the fresh file, for instance. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't know. It, it seemed like it was a better build than the gloves that's fair especially just because every attack healed you so you just were just moving forward with abandon the whole time yeah and it was i thought like obviously you can say oh it was fun because you were aggressive you were wolverine so on and so forth but for me specifically i thought it was especially fun because i got to take advantage of like a balance of um doing what we just said being Wolverine and balancing that with always knowing I can fall back on my personal playstyle, which is not that, you know. Mm-hmm. I think. It- well, congratulations! This I hope you guys enjoyed the finale.